Jen Bricker knew from a young age that she wanted to be a gymnast. So she set out to achieve that goal with unwavering drive and passion. And the fact that she was born without legs was merely a challenge to overcome. Today, Jen has a strong career as an aerialist, an acrobat. She was even a featured performer on the Britney Spears Circus World Tour in 2009. If Jen's personal story ended with her impressive physical and professional achievements, it would be worthy of attention. But there's a remarkable twist to this story. It comes with a shocking family secret and a surprising emotional bond that reads like a Hollywood script. I've never thought of myself as disabled. And no one in my life ever thinks of me that way either. Had I grown up in a different place, I have no idea who I'd be today. I started acrobatic and aerial uh, performing in 2008, actually. I saw the performers at Disney World, you know, pre performing in the air and dancing and, and flipping, and I thought, oh, this is so interesting. I could totally do this. I just need somebody to teach me. So my manager at the time, she introduced me to this guy named Nate, and he was a seasoned acrobat and aerialist, former gymnast. And so we met, and he started teaching me how to do all the aerial work and the fabric and all this stuff, and then we discovered all these possibilities um, with my body, with a partner, that you couldn't do with somebody with legs, because I'm strong, but I'm really light. And then before you know it, you know, we're, we're traveling all over the world. We're on tour with Britney Spears. We're going to all these different countries. Everything she'd done, she done it, and then some. She just got a, such a drive to her that it's, it just, it, I'm in awe with her all the time. I had been praying for a little girl and that needed a family as much as I needed a little girl. And I was at my friend's house and they were waiting to adopt. And they were waiting for a little girl and they got the call that one had just been born, but she was born without legs. and. Um, she wasn't sure she could handle a handicapped child. And I didn't think any more about it until I was going home and it's like, okay, maybe this is the one little girl that I was praying for. And so I come home and told Gerald about it and he said, well, if I thought you could handle it, and I said, that was all I needed. So I called DCFS and told them, you know, we heard of this little girl that needed a family. And so anyway, we started adoption proceedings and two and a half months later we went and picked her up. The first set of doctors that my parents went to told them that I would be confined to a bucket the rest of my life, that I would never even be able to sit up on my own. And I'm so thankful that my parents just didn't believe that. So they went and got a second opinion, thankfully. I think my dad, you know, the first question he said was, now listen, my dad's very, you know, like cut to the chase, you know. Um, 
is she going to be able to sit up on her own? And he said, the doctor looked at him and said, Mr. Bricker, she's going to do things that are beyond your wildest imagination. I remember being a kid as young as I can remember, five, six years old, watching gymnastics, being obsessed with it, and being obsessed with Dominique Mochianu. And I went to my parents and I just said, I want to be a gymnast, I want to start tumbling, I want to do this. You know, because of course it didn't dawn on me that it was, I was different. One rule in the house was, you can't say the word can't, that's not allowed. So if she came to us and wanted to do tumbling, and that's a sport with that you really need your legs. And so I found a um, coach and talked to her, and she said, sure, we'll try it. And so she ended up on a power tumbling team. And the same way with basketball, softball, volleyball, all of it. Um, she came to us and we said, sure, you could try it. Because we couldn't tell her she couldn't because we told her she couldn't use the word can't. She was never held back. She was always let go to see what she could do. Would do set up your group right there. Set, group. Out of all the gym, gymnasts, she had picked Dominique as her idol. And so we didn't think anything about it. You know, she knew she was of Romanian descent. And so Jen made the remark, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we were related? And so one day I was watching, or one evening I was watching the gymnast on, on TV, and they panned out to the audience, and it showed Camelia and Dimitri, and it had their names under it. Well, I had looked over her adoption papers of course, when we got her, and I knew that her last name would have been Mochianu. Oh my goodness, they could be related. And so when they panned out and I saw their names on there, I went in and got the adoption papers out, and sure enough, Camelia and Dimitri was her biological parents. And I was almost 16 years old. I asked my mom, I said, you know, is there anything that you know about my biological family that I don't know about. And she's like, you're never gonna believe this, but your biological last name is Mochianu. So automatically, I knew exactly what that meant. I knew that Dominique Mochianu is my biological sister. The whole past, you know, 10 years of my life, all the times watching her, all the similarities. I had her book, I was her fan, she was my idol, my only idol, the only person I ever would consider as an idol. All this floods in my mind in like 2.5 seconds. And I'm just like stunned and I'm shocked and I can't believe it's happening and just all these emotions because it's like a movie. It just doesn't seem real life, you know? My parents always said that their first child would be a gymnast. They came, you know, from Romania. They were immigrants to this country. And so their dream was to always have you know, a little gymnast. For me, gymnastics taught me so much. I mean, it allowed me to have a better life than my parents did. She's got a tremendous uh, shot at the Olympic team and perhaps an Olympic medal. You know, when other kids were going to sleepovers and birthday parties and things, I made sacrifices where I had to go train and I was traveling around the world to Brazil and Belgium and Japan competing, representing my country. So my experiences were very different, but I will always remember the 1996 Olympics as being such a special moment and um, it's nice to be able to share that legacy with my children. The day that I found out about Jen was December 10th, 2007. I'll never forget the day. I had missed a certified letter and I 
had my final exams that week. So I said, okay, in between my study sessions, I'm gonna go to the post office and grab this letter. So I sit in my car and open it. There's about 10 photographs, some documents that look like legal documents, so some court-like documents, and then there's a typed letter. The first thing I notice is, this girl looks like the spitting image of my youngest sister, Christina. And then I shift my attention as I'm shuffling through the papers, I shift my attention to the court documents. And I scroll through and I immediately zone in on my mother and father's signatures. And I see their signatures on there and I know it so well. I'm already nine months pregnant, I'm emotional, I'm about to have my first child and here I am about to, you know, find out the shock of my life. So I read the letter and halfway down I get through it and there's a line that says, you know, my biological last name is Mochianu. And that's it. It was like phew, waterworks. At that point, I was emotional. I couldn't believe it. I just, you know, I just broke down. Here I was on the eve of being a mother, my firstborn, and then finding out that I have a long lost sibling out there. It was around Christmas time. So I was just like, oh, it's cute, a Christmas card. I open it up and a piece of paper falls out, a note. And all I see is Dominique's signature at the bottom. And I remember just halfway through, I saw you're about to be an auntie. And I knew as soon as I read that, that she had accepted me as her sister. I certainly believe that my parents' cultural upbringing, you know, being brought up in a communist country and kind of secrets were really common back then. And so the fact that Jen was never revealed to me you know, although may, it may have been shocking to me, um, when I start to think about the way my parents were raised, they didn't always communicate about certain things, and that's just how it was. Jen never had any pictures of her below the waist. All of her pictures were waist up. I never saw her wheelchair in any of the pictures, so I never knew, you know, she told me she did gymnastics, softball, but in our first phone call that we ever did, it was January 14th, 2008, and halfway through the conversation, we were hitting it off perfectly. She goes, oh, by the way, you know I was born without legs, right? And I said, there goes shock number two. Oh my goodness, I was you know, taken aback, I was silent, I had some emotions, you know, like my tears were welling up in my eyes, but I didn't want her to know that, you know, I didn't want her to think that I was emotional about it. She's like, oh yeah, but people forget that within minutes of meeting me. And I said, oh my gosh, who is this person? I gotta meet you, I gotta meet you soon. You have the same ambition and like confidence that my dad had and, and all these things that were very similar to us and you know, the, what makes us us. And then I said, you know, did you have a good childhood? She said, yes, I had an amazing childhood. So I said, oh, I was at peace, you know? I felt really good about her life having been a great childhood and a great life thus far. And she said, no, my parents did the right things and all this. And I was interested to find out about her life. I mean, what do you say to the sister you've never met? So, you know, I was raised in a house where anybody could come over, everybody could come over. And it was very open and very laughing and not taking ourselves too seriously. And, you know, and she grew up in a city and in the industry from such a young age and um, with, with the abuse in her life and with very, you know, secrets and, and, and all kinds of tension and lies. What's so fascinating to me is that even with all that being said, with the polar opposite childhoods, we still have unbelievable similarities. Uh, I know my mom was much more emotional. She was, you know, I think she had carried a lot of guilt and I don't blame them, you know. I think what they did for Jen was actually, in hindsight, the best thing that ever happened to her. You know, we'll sit together at the house and we'll just have these discussions and, you know, I'm like, Jen, that was the best thing that ever happened. She's like, I know. And I was like, imagine if you would have grown up in our lifestyle. We had such a tumultuous childhood and, you know, so many different challenges. So much of my parents' focus was on my career and life and you got the love and all the attention and everything that you needed as a child to grow up and be a fulfill, you know, adult who could fulfill her dreams. Hi. Hey, how are you? Happy birthday.
birthday. <laughs> thanks, thanks. No matter what happens in your life or what shocking thing uh, comes about in your life, it's all in your attitude how you want to perceive that and how you want to deal with those situations. So what's on the agenda today? <clears throat> um, well, we're going to, I'm going to go do the dancing stuff again with Derek. Dance was always something that was actually intimidating to me because I would see these dancers when I was younger and they were beautiful and they had these thin, graceful, elegant arms. And here I was, this like bulky, muscular gymnast. And I just thought, man, how am I ever gonna be graceful or elegant or beautiful? Someone mentioned to me and they're like, you should be on Dancing with the Stars. And I immediately, I was like, no, no, what do you mean? I'm not a dancer, what do you mean? And I was like, really, you think so? I'm like, what, how, what would that look like sitting here? Like, I, I'm an aerialist and I'm an acrobat, I do all these things, and I cannot wrap my mind <laughs> for the life of me around dancing for some reason. Because it wasn't comfortable or natural for me to dance in my wheelchair. It's just really weird to me, right? So I'm thinking, well, what am I gonna do, dance in my chair? Am I gonna dance out of my chair? But I'm so short, then I have all these muscles, and I'm really, all these things are going to my mind. You know, for a person who doesn't have that disability, it's like, you think, oh, they must be so happy to have that chair to get around and to do all these things and to be more mobile. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, you were like, yes, that's unnecessary. But then in other ways, you were saying. Yeah, it it's, uh, makes life more inconvenient sometimes. When you put yourself outside of your comfort zone, massive growth happens. And I know that because of all the times I've done it. I know that if I feel a little anxiety or I feel like, ooh, I don't know about this, is that in my comfort zone, that means I should do it. Because there's just, just amazing things happen when you just take that leap of faith, you take that step to really put yourself out there and be okay with not being the best at what you're doing, be okay with looking a little silly in the beginning. She's always amazed us, but she's really never surprised us because we watched her from, you know, the very beginning doing things that we never dreamed that she would do. And you wouldn't think coming from a small town with just a four-way stop that you would, you know, the chances of us adopting this little girl and turning out to be um, sister to Dominic Murfianu and, and growing up the way she did and everything, it, it, nothing surprised us, but at the same time, it seems like a fairy tale story. 